The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship. It is so good to see all of you here in the sanctuary. It is good to greet the folks who are with us on the live stream this morning or who are watching this recorded. Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter. First of all, I want to say thank you to Sandy Simmons. Sandy is our guest musician this morning. She is filling in while Gail is on vacation. So Sandy, thank you for leading our music today and lifting our hearts in worship. I also want to thank all of you who filled out the survey that we were doing on in-person and online worship. We got a lot of responses, a lot of great information. We'll be figuring out the best way to share all of that with the congregation. Um, but uh, you, you did give us a lot of good insights as to how we can set our priorities as we reemerge from this time of pandemic. Something I want to really encourage all of you to do, and it's something that ties in very much with the sermon today, is to go online and download the daily devotions guide from our website. The address for that website is on the back of your bulletin. A shortened version of it is just rlcmilford.com slash connect. And if you go there every Sunday in the afternoon, we upload a, um, a daily devotions guide that is based on the Sunday's readings. Pastor Paige and I put that together. It has a prayer focus for every day. It has a schedule of psalms for you to read and pray through every day. It has um, reflections on three Bible passages for the week. And the reason I'm really lifting this up is in our gospel today, Jesus calls on us to abide in him and to let his word abide in us. And these daily devotions are a tool that Pastor Paige and I uh, work on that we want to put in your hands to help you to abide more deeply in Christ. So again, please go to rl rlcmilford.com slash connect, and every Sunday afternoon you'll find a downloadable devotions guide. You can keep it on your computer, on your phone, you can print it out, um, but it goes for the week to come. For the, those of us here in the sanctuary, I just want to remind you of our precautions. Please do keep your mask on, covering your nose and your mouth during the whole worship service. When Pastor Page or I are behind the altar, behind the lectern, or in the pulpit, and at a greater distance, we will have our masks off. But when we are handling communion, or any time we are not behind the altar or pulpit, we will keep our masks on as well. I want to remind you to please fill out those worship attendance sheets that were at your spot when you were seated. You can turn that in along with your pen when you are dismissed for communion. Um, those baskets are in the narthex, and we will tell you more about the communion procedure as we get closer to that. Also out in the narthex is an offering plate that you may make use of if you desire. If you're watching online, you can go to rlcmilford.com slash give to give through our website. With those announcements, I invite you now to please stand as you are able for confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the God of life and love, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Set us free from the sins that hold us captive. Cleanse our hearts and minds by the grace of your Holy Spirit, so that we may love and serve you in holiness and joy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But the Lord is a God of mercy and grace who invites us to confess our sins and find forgiveness in his never failing love. Let us pause then in silent confession before our God.
most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, now and forever. Amen. Jesus the Savior died and rose again for the salvation of the world, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. And so, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you give life to all of creation through your Son. Fill us with his presence as branches connected to him, the true vine, so that we may bear the fruit of faithful and loving lives through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from 1 John. Beloved, Let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as a Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. 
Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Dear sisters and brothers, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I think that the most important material in the world right now, the most important substance in terms of the impact that it makes on our hearts and our minds and our souls, is glass. Why is glass so important? Screens. Glass on your television screen, on your phone, on your computer monitor. And right now I worry that we are shaped more by glass than by grace. Think about it. How much time do we spend looking at televisions, computers, and phones? And what do we see? What comes to us? What feeds our minds through these screens? Angry sound bites on Twitter. Idealized pictures of other people's supposedly perfect lives on Facebook and Instagram. Everything superficial, shallow, quick. Now, maybe you're sitting there right now saying, hey, uh, I don't have a smartphone. I'm not on social media. This doesn't bother me. All right, what comes through that television screen? More sound bites more outrage. Now, I know you've heard me say this before, but I don't think I can say it enough. When you watch cable news, you are not the customer. When you watch cable news, you're the product. The advertisers are the customers. Your attention, your eyeballs are the product that CNN or Fox or MSNBC or whoever deliver to the advertiser. So remember, cable news does not want you informed. It wants you anxious and angry because then you'll keep on watching. And then the advertisers can make you even more dissatisfied with everything you already have and more envious of things you didn't even know existed until the commercial showed you that you need them. Now, when it comes to computers, yes, all the technology that has allowed us to stay connected during this time is wonderful. And most of the people hearing this message, the irony here, is they're probably getting it online through a screen. But as great as this technology is, it is still literally a flattened version of each other. It is less than face-to-face -face fellowship. 
glass screens shape us and we start to look like what we look at. This is what Jesus means in John 15. See, he uses this beautiful image of vine and branches to show us what our relationship to him is meant to be. Our life, our vitality and purpose and strength are all meant to come not from ourselves, not from our own efforts, not from our screens, but from him. Jesus says we can abide in him that his word can abide in us. And that word abide, which is so important in John's gospel, it means a deep connection. It means we can live in Jesus like he is our home. And his word can find a home in us. And this is what shapes healthy human souls. The love of Christ and the truth of his word are the things that make us into fully alive, fully thriving children of God. But if we are abiding more in the glow of our screens than in the light of God, we will not flourish. And instead, we will start to mirror the anxiety and anger and division of our screens more than we reflect the peace and love and mission of our Lord. Now, don't get me wrong. I love technology. And you can ask my kids. I am often in front of a screen but I try to be on guard about what messages those screens are feeding me. And if the glass crowds out the grace, then it's time to change focus. And Jesus puts it pretty strongly. I don't know if you caught this or not. If we are not abiding in him, he says, if his word is not abiding in us and making us spiritually fruitful, then we will wither, he says. We will be removed from the vine. And I've got to wonder, this is a great question to ask whenever you're reading scripture. What if Jesus is serious? I mean, what if he really means that? What if a life that is shaped more by glass than by grace is an existence that is spiritually dead? What if Jesus really means it? That we are supposed to be so filled with his love and truth that when people in the world around us hear the word church, they should immediately Think of love, sacrifice, humility, and compassion. What if the point of life isn't to do whatever makes me happy, but instead to overflow with the presence of Jesus so that we become a source of hope and healing for our neighbors? And what if, what if when we allow the division and the selfishness and the fear and anger of the world seep from our screens into our souls, we're poisoning not just our own minds, but even the very mission of the church. What if Jesus is serious? Maybe we need to readjust our priorities. So what should we do about this? Well, here's the good news. Jesus gives himself to you freely 
as the source of a life that is full of hope and power and compassion. His love and truth are exactly what we need, not only to thrive for ourselves, but to make us, us into the kind of people who overflow with blessing, with fruit for others. And this life is a gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to create it. There is nothing you have to do to deserve it. It's grace. Jesus the vine simply gives his love to us, the branches. The only question is, will we receive it? See, that's what abiding means. This word abide asks us the question, will we spend time in the presence of Jesus? Will we let his word enter deeply into our minds and our hearts? See, this is why the regular daily practice of prayer and Bible reading are so essential to Christian life. Because this is how we abide in Christ. The truth is we are not able to shape our own souls into joy and truth and generosity and hope and peace on our own. Never mind if we are absorbed by our screens. We need God's word. We need time spent paying attention to Jesus. In his cross and resurrection, he defeated sin and death for you. And when you spend time in his presence, his grace can heal your soul and repair your life. And when his word sinks beneath the surface into your heart, into your mind, he will transform your whole existence. What once was dry and withered will bear amazing fruit for the blessing of others. See, it is a spiritual truth. We end up looking like what we spend time looking at. So don't stay on the surface of glass screens. Set aside time for prayer, for Bible reading. Not because it'll earn you a holy reputation or give you some moral superiority. But because that is how we simply, humbly receive the glorious life that Jesus died and rose again to give to you. He is the true vine. Let him fill you with love and truth and power and purpose. Abiding in him, you will bear fruit that will bless your neighbors and our whole world. Amen.
Please stand as you are able and let us confess together the words of our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in Christ's victory over sin and death, let us pray that our resurrection hope would flow out from us and the whole church to all the world. Heavenly Father, Give us the faith to see that you are the one who can design and shape our souls so we can experience the fullness of life you want to give us. Help us to entrust ourselves to you so that we may find life in your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, teach us to abide in you. Open our hearts to your loving presence and our minds to your saving word. When the world seeks to fill us with anxiety, fear, and greed, help us to discover the peace, joy, and generosity you can create in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Holy Spirit, draw your whole church ever more deeply into the mystery of your love. Unite your people so that we may bear witness to your perfect goodness. Purify us so that we may offer the world a living example of what your power can do. Use us to meet the physical and spiritual needs of our neighbors and send us out to be instruments of reconciliation, truth, and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for an end to the pandemic. We remember especially the people of India suffering under a new surge of infections. Bring healing to those who are ill and grant that leaders throughout the world may make wise decisions for the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for peace in our world, in our nations, in our cities, in our homes, and in our hearts. Bring an end to violence, injustice, and poverty. Use us and Christians everywhere to spread the gospel of peace for all to hear. We lift before you especially the family of Corporal Keith Hecook, slain in the line of duty, and for those who grieve and were traumatized by the shootings at Smyrna Middle School. May your Holy Spirit provide comfort in the face of evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we lift before you all those who are facing illness, struggling with addiction, grieving, or in other special need, especially Pastor John Ranney, Ray Gannon, Pam Gruel, Renata McKenzie, Lee Clark, June Brightfeller, Linda Kakamas, Harriet and Harriet Long, Barbara Seth, Don Hanna, Dot Wilson, Pat Sparks, Betty Lou Eckenrod, Greg Waddington, David, Becca McKenzie, Howard Evers, 
William Hitch, the Chambly family, John Eustace, Julia Summerland, Harold and Carol Peterson, Debbie Davis, Kathy Hubbard, Frank Walker Sr., Liz Corey, Ashley, Carol, Vance and Sue Carpenter, Steve and Judy Franklin, Kelsey Oldland, and the family of Salgundo Saldana, and all those whom we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, O Lord, make us bold to pray as your Son taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. For those at home, we invite you to share the peace with those around you. And with that greeting of peace, I want to speak to those watching online today and watching the recording. We are so glad that you joined us. And at this point, our live stream is coming to an end. And so we bless you to go abide in the love and truth of Jesus. Be at peace and serve the Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us, and we hope to see you again.